All right, we're going to be talking about data models. Data models today, um, how do we pick our standards? Um, what's my recommendations? How do we do it? Take zero. All right, Jared, what's the question? So, standard data models, Walker's thoughts on the use of industry standards, ISA 95, CFX, et cetera, AKA, should factories be forced to spitting their standard or their data into these definitions or create their own standard data model? Where standardization makes sense? All right, so this is a good question. The in a nutshell, the question is: is should manufacturers and in, or members of industry, while they're digitally transforming and they're building a data infrastructure, should they be force fitting their um, data from their business? into a standard data model and pushing it down? Obviously, the answer is no. And this, the person who's asking this question wants my opinion on how it should be handled. So let's talk about, um, so let's do this. Let's do data model standards, OK? What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of show you how we incorporate ISA 95 part two with ISO 55001 with uh, ISA uh, S88, S88 for batch control, with um, non-standardized data models, okay? So let's start with uh, ISA 95 part two. This is how we semantically organize data in a unified namespace generally. This is the, how, we're, how we're creating the semantic hierarchy, how we're teaching people to go get what they're looking for. So ISA 95 part two is, you know, enterprise, site, area, line, and cell. We're just going to leave it down to the line level. This is our ISA 95 part two. Okay, so we're using ISA 95 part two as the standard for our semantic hierarchy. Okay, um, let's go at the line level. Below the line level, we're going to end up with a namespace called edge. Okay. Inside that edge, inside the edge, we're going to be connected to our devices on the plant floor. So at our line, let's say, for example, we have a single PLC. In fact, let's do, uh, let's go with a Siemens uh, D445 motion controller. So this will be a D445 motion controller from Siemens on the edge. Okay. And we're going to extract that data over XML DA. We're going to use an XML DA driver to consume the tags from the PLC, from the motion controller, over XML DA. And then what we want to do is we might want to model that. We might have high byte out here, okay, consuming this stuff over XML DA, or, or actually that originally came XML DA, and now they're going to consume it over either OPC UA or MQTT. And they are going to model it, and they're going to put it back on the edge and, and now what we're going to do is we're going to create modeled data, okay? And we can use any standard we want, okay, for our modeled data. We can create, we can grab a profile from SESME. We can use a companion spec from OPC. Uh, we can write our own model, okay? But we're going to have modeled edge data that basically takes the tags from the D445 motion controller and turns it into um, a model that can be consumed by digital objects um, later on in our process. So on the edge, the, the standard, the we're, semantic hierarchy and the on the edge, we're basically using our standard of choice, generally from some type of companion specification. It could be an industry specific companion specification, but we're using some type of data ops software to model it, all right? Let's do, um, let's use the example of um, how do I take my business data and I make it compliant with ISO 55001, which is uh, ISO standard for asset management. So I'm going to create a namespace called 55001, and my same data ops tool is going to package that, that payload, as a JSON. Okay? So where the where the payload inside this topic is a is the ISO 
one standard parameters. Um, I don't have them on me, but there's uh, like 12 parent entities and then each of them have their own elements underneath it. So now what I've done is I'm for asset management, I'm using ISO 5501, 55001, but I'm putting it inside a unified namespace and I'm modeling it using some external software. And then the same thing for say S88, we would do the exact same thing. We'd model it as a JSON and we would use ISA 88 as the standard for building that payload. And that would be done externally as well. But I wanna to go to one other last component here and that is what do we do about custom standards? So you guys will hear us talk about when we build um, systems, I, I use this concept called the red and the blue. Okay, so this, well, this is gonna be a visualization. This is information being displayed on a screen. And what we're going to do is we're gonna build our visualization using red and blue concepts. Okay, so I've got red here, 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 and then I'm gonna, I'm going to put a blue box there. How do we do that? Well, we actually do data modeling in our namespace under line. We're going to create a, down here, but I'm going to put it up here. We're going to create a, um, a namespace to build this visualization. Okay, and in our case, we oftentimes we call it dashboard, we call it line overlay, we, we may call it um, line display, but we'll just go ahead and call it line display. And what we're going to have are three namespaces underneath it. Let's say this is our OEE, this is MTTR, MTBF, this is downtime. What we're going to do is we're going to write an internal standard for our organization on what the OEE object looks like. And that's going to go here, okay? And then it's going to have all of its subparameters. We're going to do the same thing for MTTR and MTBF. And we're going to have our sub elements that will be visualized here. And then we're going to do the same thing for downtime. We will also, this is going to be some custom ad hoc um, data visualization. We are going to create an ad hoc model maybe for this asset type that contains the elements that go up on that screen. So what I've got here now, so what, what does that mean? Well, what I have is I have standard. So from here to here is ISA 95 part two. I have standard. This is ISO 55001. I have standard. This is ISA S88. I also have standardized payload, right? It, it, the way that the tags are named are not based on a standard, but the way that I retrieve them from the motion controller is standardized. And then I have my custom model and my custom model working together. So the answer, the, lo the short answer to your question is, this is the reason I'm so hard on organizations that don't have the ability to do this red and blue. This is a, say I build a platform and I don't have the ability to do standardized elements with non-standardized elements. The, the best, it, it, this is a really good example of a data model. So if red is the standard element, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna just gonna create a data model from a companion spec for some asset. And that, and that model for that companion, from that companion spec says that it requires to have these three parent elements with these three, these four sub attributes for each, okay? So that's me being in compliance with the companion specification for this asset for that data model. But what, what you should also do at the exact same time, and the reason unified namespace is so scalable, is I can create my own ad hoc elements that are the blue elements. So when on one instance of my of this data model, it may be just the red stuff. On a on a one-off instance where the PLC was written by some or the PLC code was written by some other machine builder and they added some additional features, I can extend, I can and I can create additional instances of that. Right. So when it comes to data modeling, this is probably normally we don't get into this level of detail 
in a YouTube video because the vast majority of the audience, they don't do application. This is the stuff we talk about in mastermind and mentorship. This is the kind of stuff we teach in mastermind and mentorship. This is the kind of stuff we teach in like member videos, like where, where the audience we know are the technical are the technical audience. This is the stuff we share on Discord. It's a really good question. This question came from the Discord server. It's an outstanding question. I chose to answer it on the YouTube channel because um, Sal Castro from SAP Digital Manufacturing Cloud asked specifically this ISO 55001 and S88 question um, on LinkedIn. He actually, he, he was struggling to understand, well, how are you using industrial standards for constructing your data, but also using a unified namespace, which is non-standardized? Well, the answer is, we can pick and choose from the standards we want to use when building our unified namespace. And the answer is the same for the member who asked the question in the Discord server. All right, hopefully that is as clear as can possibly be. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and we'll see you in the next one.